the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, mending their nets. He called them at once, and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the men he employed, they went after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, we hear part of the story of the book of Jonah, and it is truly a whale of a story. Sorry. (laughs) But the truth is, this is the story of a prophet who struggles with God asking him to do his work, and he runs away from God. The whole book of Jonah is about Jonah trying not to do God's will, to evade God. But he's overwhelmed, first of all, by what God asks him to do. And in one part of the story, he tries to leave God by going to another country, and he travels by boat. There is a big storm, and the fishermen start, the sailors rather, start throwing everything overboard to keep the boat afloat. And eventually Jonah says, it's me that's causing the storm. You have to throw me over. So... Reluctantly, they throw Jonah overboard and everything goes calm again. The whole story of Jonah is full of a bit of mirth and kind of irony and so on. This is a a very interesting book to read if you want to read the whole book of Jonah. But to read it with the lens of this man who's struggling to not accept God's will, but God keeps on getting him to do his will. We are told that he's swallowed up by a whale and is in the belly of a whale for three days, which is perhaps a mild exaggeration of the storyteller. But the truth is, he doesn't doesn't die after he's thrown overboard. He remains alive. Why? Because God is keeping him alive. God wants him to do something that will save the lives of thousands of people, thousands of people in the great city of Nineveh who are forgetting God, who are committing terrible sins. And Jonah is sent to tell them, repent or God will destroy your city. And amazingly, they listen. And Jonah is quite perturbed at this because he was expecting God to to throw down uh, fire and brimstone on the city and show what a mighty God he was. And he never got to see that. So again, Jonah is pretty miffed with God and he goes off and he lies under, uh, he, li- he, he says to God, I just want to die. And he lies in the sun. And God causes a plant to grow over Jonah to give him shade. And there is fruit on this plant. And so he starts taking the fruit from the plant, says life's getting better. And then the next day, the plant dies and Jonah is back down in the dumps. And then God says, look, you will be looked after by me. It's not up to you to decide what I will do, how I will judge people. Your job is just to do your part of the plan. And I think the story of Jonah and his ups and downs and the humor in the the story is is, is a bit like our lives. I think it tells us something about our lives. I wonder what your view of God is like. Is your God an angry God, like the way Jonah wanted God to be? Is he a God who does not suffer fools gladly? Is that how you see other people? Is he a weak God who just lets people do whatever they want? A disinterested God who doesn't care what happens to his people? I think how we view God is also about how we trust him or don't trust him. 
When he forgives us, do we believe that we are truly forgiven? When he says, I will be with you always, do we search for his presence in our busy lives? Do we judge others harshly because we believe that's how God judges them and we're going to give them uh, a good run for their money? Do we run away from God's grace? Do we spend our life trying to avoid God somehow like silly Jonah, thinking that we will do that, we will manage to do that, putting off knowing, uh, putting off what we know we should be doing? In the end, do we believe that God's will is actually good for us? Do we not, do we struggle to accept that? The story of Jonah is a very powerful story. It really is the story of our lives. And these are things, of course, that Jonah agonized over. And I think we're a bit like him. In the end, Jonah finally accepts that God had a good plan and that Jonah was an important part of that plan. And we too are part of God's great plan, each and every one of us. And so we hear the gospel, repent and believe the good news. That means surrender to God. And when you surrender to God, you will find a peace that the world cannot give. Indeed, you will find that God is very close. So we're invited to reflect on Jonah's life tonight. It might teach you to accept something that he learned the hard way. And perhaps we pray that it might not be so hard for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.